the interior of a small room with a screen a woman in her mid-thirties, with long wavy dark hair, wearing a white shirt with very wide sleeves and a beige skirt. On the legs, flesh-colored, semi-transparent tights and patent white cream high heels. In the video, we see a standing position in which the woman partially extends her foot out of her left shoe. In general, he often stands in a cross-legged position, where the left leg is behind the right and is a little looser, making it easier to slide the left foot out of the shoes. Scientists have created a shape-shifting robot, like from the movie Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Chinese engineers have designed miniature humanoid robots that quickly and reversibly transition between liquid and solid states. In addition to the ability to shapeshift, which resembles the abilities of the T-1000 from Terminator 2, Judgment Day, the robots are magnetic and can conduct electricity. Scientists from the Middle Kingdom, inspired by sea cucumbers and their ability to change the stiffness of their tissues, have developed robots capable of reversibly changing shape. Obstacle course test footage shows the tiny robot changing from solid to liquid, literally melting to escape the tiny cell it was placed in. The robots constructed so far have been hard and rigid. New, soft, robots have the opposite problem. They are flexible but weak, and their movements are difficult to control. Giving robots the ability to transition between liquid and solid states gives them greater functionality, said lead author Chung Feng Pan of the University of Hong Kong. The research team created a new state-changing material and called it Magnetoactive Solid Liquid Phase Transitional Machine. They did this by embedding magnetic particles in gallium a metal with very low melting point of 29.8 degrees C. Magnetic particles serve two roles, explains co-author Carmel Majidi of Carnegie Mellon University. First, they make the material react to a changing magnetic field. Thanks to this, it can be heated by induction and cause a change of state of aggregation. But the magnetic particles also give the robots mobility and the ability to move in response to the magnetic field, says the scientist. Currently, state-changing materials must rely on external heat sources. They are also much stickier than the one developed in China. Before exploring potential applications, the team tested the mobility and strength of the material. With the help of a magnetic field, small robots crossed artificial moats, climbed walls and even split in half to cooperate in moving other objects, then returned to their original shapes. In the video released by the researchers, a humanoid robot liquefies to overcome the bars in the cell of his small prison, after which it reforms itself into its original shape. Now we want to use our new material in a more practical way. Perhaps it will solve some very specific medical and engineering problems, says Pan. The team has already been able to use robots to remove the foreign object from a model stomach and deliver drugs. The material could also be used as a soldering robot to assemble and repair circuits by soaking into hard-to-reach areas and acting as both a solder and a conductor. Similarly, it can be used as a universal mechanical bolt for assembling parts in spaces where a human cannot get. Future work should focus on the possibilities of using similar robots in medicine, says Majidi. Much more research will be needed before robots can actually be used to deliver drugs or remove foreign objects from the body, he points out. The search for life on Mars. Research in the Atacama Desert points to a possible obstacle.
An international group of scientists has suggested that the instruments present in rovers sent to the Red Planet to collect and analyze evidence of past life, there may not be sensitive enough to make accurate assessments. New research conducted in what is considered the oldest desert in the world shows that the technology equipped with Martian rovers is not always able to detect signs of life on the surface of our planet, let alone on Mars. Chile's Atacama Desert contains sand and rocks rich in hematite and mudstone. Geologically, this region is quite similar to parts of the surface found on Mars which is why astrobiologists often use it as a model for the red planet. The desert is considered the second driest place on the planet. Only stones, dust and salt lakes. What could survive in such a place? It turns out that something could. A group of scientists in the desert used scientific instruments that are either already on Mars landers, or rovers, or will be placed on them in the future. They wanted to see if they would be as good at identifying biomarkers and DNA as laboratory instruments. They found that samples taken on Atacama contained numerous microorganisms of undetermined classification, which they called the dark microbiome. Further analysis also revealed a mix of biosignatures of current and ancient microorganisms that could barely be detected with state-of-the-art laboratory equipment. Scientists have had considerable difficulty identifying many of the organisms whose genetic material has been found. Existing databases turned out to be insufficient here. This showed that the equipment sent to Mars in search of life may not be sensitive enough. The researchers highlighted the need for more powerful tools. However, they also noticed that those sent to Mars are the result of a compromise between weight, durability and precision of measurements. But what do the research results tell us about the potential usefulness of the instruments used in the search for life on Mars? While they did manage to find numerous signs of life on Atacama, they may not be sensitive enough to do the same job on the Red Planet. Scientists believe that if the possible genetic material on Mars were really old and traced, there would be a risk that the tools used would simply not notice it. Besides, to confirm such a discovery, the samples taken would still need to be transported to Earth for full analysis. The research team responsible for the described research hope that their results will prove useful to NASA and ESA. The interior of a small room with a screen a woman in her mid-thirties, with long wavy dark hair, wearing a white shirt with very wide sleeves and a beige skirt. On the legs, flesh-colored, semi-transparent tights and patent white cream high heels. In the video, we see a standing position in which the woman partially extends her foot out of her left shoe. In general, he often stands in a cross-legged position, where the left leg is behind the right and is a little looser, making it easier to slide the left foot out of the shoes.